My name is Rani Bell and I am testifying from Southampton in the UK. I joined NSPP Day in January 2022. I got married in 2019 and I relocated to the UK. Six months later, my husband joined me. In 2020, we started trying for a child. It wasn't forthcoming, so I went to the GP and after running tests and carrying out a transvaginal ultrasound, I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome and my hormones were really deranged. The GP started me on metformin and I got pregnant in 2020. I didn't carry it for up to 12 weeks and I lost it. I got pregnant again and I lost it. This time around, I was introduced to a fertility coach who helped me with some medications that I could use to balance my hormones. I was taking a lot of medications every morning and it was really, really difficult for me. It was depressing. I made a list of some of those medications just so that you know how many tablets I was swallowing every morning. I was taking zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D, myo inositol, evening primrose, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, vitamin E, omega-3, folic acid, L-arginine, and the most dangerous of them all that just broke me was NAC and acetylcysteine. That's the meaning of NAC. I started taking NAC after my third miscarriage when the fertility coach outrightly told me that my eggs were bad, that I was producing eggs that were not viable and NAP was going to help my eggs. It's a very smelly medication. It was horrible taking that capsule every morning. It smelled like rotten egg. I took it for a while and then one day after my third miscarriage, which happened in January of 2022, I just woke up and I lost it. I packed all of the medications, put it in a bag and went and dropped it somewhere. I couldn't see it. And I said, look, I was done taking 14 to 15 tablets every morning. That was torture. Prior to that day, I had checked. As usual, every month I would check. I spent a lot of money on pregnancy strips, those expensive ones. So I had checked before that day and it was negative. But on that fateful morning, as I was praying, that 2nd of June, 1 hour, 8 minutes, 52 seconds into the prayer, and I, I quote, Pastor Jerry had asked that if you were pregnant, lay your hands on your stomach so he would pray for you. I wasn't pregnant because I had checked and I knew I wasn't pregnant. But I laid my hands on my stomach anyways. And after he prayed for people that were pregnant, he came and he said, and I quote, For you to know that the Lord saw you. I said pregnant women should lay their hands on their belly. Some people who were not pregnant, you also laid your own hands out of faith. The Lord saw you. The Lord saw you. The Lord said, let it be an abomination unto me if I do not honor my name in your life for doing this. Let the coming weeks <laughs> hand you over your baby. I labor for you to know that the Lord saw you. I said pregnant women should lay their hands on your belly. Some people who were not pregnant, you also laid your own hands out of faith. The Lord saw you. The Lord saw you. The Lord, saw you. The Lord said, let it be an abomination unto me if I do not honor my name in your life. If I do not honor my name in your life for doing this, for doing this, Jakarta, let the coming weeks, let the coming weeks hand you over your baby. I gathered momentum, summoned courage, courage, and I checked, and lo and behold, it was positive. I was pregnant. I carried the pregnancy through. I used to pray all the time when I was pregnant. I, would, I never missed a day on the altar. And I had my child. Eight days later, I went home with my evidence. There are actually no words. Sometimes when I just think of my experience, I just cry. I've not stopped sharing and I've not stopped talking about NSPPD to people because I'm a carrier of the testimonies. 
I'm grateful to you, Pastor Jerry. Like I said, I do not have the right words, but God will bless you.